Well, hey there, YouTubers. This is Joe Drums coming to you. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about actually uh, hooking up uh, audio equipment to your computer so that you can record. And we'll kind of go through the software and the hardware so you can get a little bit better idea how to record your drums for yourself. Uh, so again, like what I said uh, before, is I have this, uh, this Mac, uh, iMac computer. I've got the KRK uh, speakers. And below I have a mixer. We're not going to use that basically today, but we are going to use the uh, Personas FirePod. And that studio project is what it's called. Um, and right now I have all the microphones plugged in on this side. And we're going to run through and go to uh, hook up all the, the microphones on the drums right now. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now that we have all the microphones hooked up to the drums, uh, like I said before, we have the microphones plugged into the Personas uh, FirePod Studio project. And basically, on the other end of this, it's hard to show you this because I've got stuff uh, piled up in the back, you can't really see it. But all I have is a FireWire, uh, FireWire 400 cable going to a FireWire 800 cable to the back of the iMac computer. Now, some of the uh, hardware ones uh, have USB. This particular one has FireWire. There's tons of different ones that are on the market, different companies, different makes and models. And uh, it's really preference and price-wise what, you know, what you can afford. Uh, this particular one was about $500. Uh, it's a little steep. Sometimes it was even a little steep for my pocketbook. But uh, on the other hand, uh, it makes really good audio. I uh, was really happy with the quality 
and in the back of my computer it goes like I said into Firewire 800 and that's basically it. Um, so yours would, you know, if you have a PC out there, yours would probably connect to USB. So once you have all of that, um, we can go through the software and I'll show you how that's used uh, right now. Okay, and what we're going to do right now is we're going down to the uh, system preferences. Again, on uh, the Windows version, uh, you have preferences on there as well. And you're going to basically go into this. I'm going to go into mine. Uh, system preferences and I'm going to look for my sound that's what's going to be your input and your output of your sound and we want to select a couple things to make uh, sure that we're going to be able to record and be able to hear back what we're recording so we're going to click on that and we're going to go to output and as you can see right now I have it set for Presonus Fire Studio which is what I want I want to be able to hear my audio through my KRK Rocket 5's my external speakers, I don't want to hear it with my built-in speakers. Um, I mean, you can if you don't have Rocket 5s. Like, like I say, I prefer a studio monitor because you're going to get the truest sound coming back out of what you recorded, and it's a better way to, you know, uh, adjust and tweak the sound that you want to get to get the best overall sound. So that's what that's for. And then the other thing you want to make sure you have is your input device is also for your Presonus Fire Studio as well because you want your input, uh, you want the drum sound going into the microphones, into your computer and recording. So make sure that you have your output and your input set before you go into your software program, which is going to be my uh, Logic Pro Studio. So here we are, there's my Logic Pro Studio. Let's click on that right now and we'll go into the setup of that. Okay, and what we're going to do, we're going to load up a uh, brand new project. Uh, right here, this is uh, an empty project. It's called Create an Empty Project. That's the one we're going to use. Uh, the other two down here, uh, you might have this maybe with your program as well. Uh, they have one for guitar tones. You can pull that up and it gives you tracks just for using and recording guitars. And the third option is for all instruments. You can get a MIDI keyboard and it has a USB capability you can plug it in and actually use the software sounds that come with the uh, Logic Pro. But we're going to go to uh, start an empty project so we'll do that and it comes up like this you can see this is where your tracks will be in this area here and they'll start making the tracks going down this way. Uh, right now you can see it says new track number it says uh, one I want to make that eight because I actually have eight recording tracks that I'm doing. They're going to be audio, uh, which is using microphones, so that's, I'm going to use that. Uh, software instruments is if you're doing, again, the, the built-in sounds, and it gives you the option of doing those. And then external MIDI is if you have a MIDI keyboard or something external, like a drum machine or a keyboard. You would start that, and then that would be a MIDI track for that. But we're just going to leave it as audio. Uh, the format, I'm going to leave it as mono. Uh, the input uh, one, it's going to start with and everything's going to be input one uh, but I'll change those individually well, you'll see how to do that in a minute and then the output uh, goes output 1-2 uh, and we'll leave that as is too so everything's pretty generic we're going to check these boxes the input monitoring and record enable what that does is it just clicks on a couple extra buttons to uh, get everything going so I don't have to do much when I get it started so we're going to hit create and what will come up here is it'll ask me what do you want to name it what do you want to name the project? But we'll call this a green, oops, green drum set and uh, recording. And let's see, I'm going to leave that as logic. That'll go into that logic folder in my music uh, on my hard drive. Uh, down here are some other options. I just leave these checked. I don't have to really do anything there. Uh, and then we're going to click save and now I can go ahead and create the project and here we go and as you can see I have audio one two three all the way up to eight and um, each one of these now if I click on this one here over in this section here you're going to look for something that has inputs and you have to switch each one of these tracks to a different input for each mic. If you leave it as is, then all of these tracks are going to be set to input one, 
and whatever is coming in through mic one is going to end up on all these tracks so you don't want to do that so we're going to change uh, obviously audio one is one so we're going to leave that as is we'll click on audio two and you can see it still says input one here I'm going to go in and change that to two so now that track two is input two track three we're going to change that to three and so on okay and what we're going to do right now is we're going to arm these tracks into record Okay, and with these other two uh, features you might see on other software programs such as uh, this Logic Pro is that I stands for input which actually you're arming the track each one of the tracks and then this will record if these are not lit up in record then it's not going to record your track for you the other two is like when you're actually listening back to the track if you want to mute a certain track you would hit the M for mute and then, of course, S is for solo, which means that you can partic uh, pick out a particular track and just hear that particular track and shut everything else off. So there's a couple ways to do kind of very various same things, but, again, they, they both are very handy when you're listening back to, you know, multiple audio, audio tracks. All right, uh, so that's pretty much set there. Uh, if you want to look at it another way, you can pull up this right down here. This thing is called a mixer. And what the mixer does, you can kind of see all the bells and whistles of everything that you're doing with your tracks at one time. Uh, so that's what's nice about this. You can turn volumes up and down here. That's what this is right here. You can add uh, stereo effects. Uh, you can send them to different areas of, of the mixer. And add EQ up here. There's a lot of different bells and whistles. I'm not going to get into totally all of that. Because uh, it, it would spend, I could take a whole hour here, you know, telling you how to do everything. But we're going to do just some basic things and basic functions. If you guys have any other questions about anything, we'll we'll get to those when we get to them. So anyway, uh, so that's the mixer, and I want to leave all the tracks right now as is. And you'll notice that each one of the tracks says audio one through audio eight, but we need to actually specify what. The track is it very it gets very confusing if you don't know what track is what uh, you know when you're recording uh, like say if I recorded you know hi hat on three one time and the next time three was a tom or something it can get very you know tedious if you don't know what the name of the track is really called so we're gonna label these right now audio one obviously is gonna be my bass drum track uh, so we'll leave that uh, we're gonna change two is actually the back of the bass drum. So I'm going to put bass drum and we'll put in parentheses back and that's that 57 that I put on the uh, the bass drum. And the reason why I do that, you don't necessarily have to do that, you can record just the front head but I found that over the years of recording that with that uh, back head being recorded uh, it actually gives a nice slap to it so you can hear the punch and you can hear the tone of the bass drum. Um, the more mics you have, obviously you can do the same thing with the bottom of the snare. I didn't do it in this particular uh, demonstration, but I would like to have one of those down the road. I'm going to get some more inputs pretty soon, and uh, I'll be able to do that very thing. So I'm kind of, kind of limited right now, um, but later on I'll be able to expand it. And again, you can as well. Uh, there's a lot of products on the market with different audio input devices that you can connect. Some are USB, some are FireWire. Um, so as we go on here, I got bass drum, bass drum back. Uh, if you can't see it, it's just because this has got to be slid over right here, like so. You can see there. Uh, the third one is going to be my snare drum, and we'll put that in there. Uh, fourth one is going to be tom one, which is like my first rack tom. Second rack tom, and we'll put, call that tom two. You can call them whatever you want, but this is what I'm doing. And then uh, floor tom. 
or you can call it Tom 3 or whatever. We'll, we'll call it Tom 3. Just make it all unified. Just at least you know what it, you know what the track is. And then Audio 7 and Audio 8 are actually going to be my overhead. So I'm going to call it Overhead 1 and Overhead 2. Okay, so we're pretty much set now as far as the tracks are concerned. I know what they are. I can look at them at a glance. Um, this program also has the option to actually color the track so you can actually go by color coded. Like, you know, if you want your snare always purple or the bass drum's always green or whatever, it's really easy to look at. Um, again, I'm not going to get into all that. Um, and over here on this side here is a library of different uh, setups. If I hit drum and percussion, hit acoustic drums, acoustic kit. Uh, these are actually software kits that you can use, but again, we'll get into that maybe in another video or so. So I'm pretty much set to go ahead and set up the, uh, the recording. One other thing I want to point out, I think this is really interesting and very important to have uh, if you want to do a recording right, is in this particular file, uh, if I go down to where it says project settings, this is very important. You've got a lot of different things that can go on here. Synchronization, metronome, recording, tuning, audio, MIDI, score, video, assets, and important project settings. But the main one I'd like to talk about today is just metronome. And that is important when you're trying to start a song. Because the worst thing you can do is not know when to start playing. And it can run into a lot of time and trouble. So what I like to do is have a click while recording and then click on only during the count in. So you can set it to, you know, two, three, four measures of count in, or you can have just one measure, whatever you want. I sometimes have to, if I'm recording, I want to set it up for maybe four measures just so I get behind the drum set when I'm doing this. Um, I have the, the whole thing on wheels, but back in the old day, I used to have to, <laughs> to run to the drum set to record. Uh, but with this, because I've got it on wheels now, I can actually have it right at the, the, the drum set. So anyway, uh, those are the two important ones there. Um, you can also click while playing if you want to make sure that you're playing in, in, uh, in time while you're listening back to the track once it's recorded. You can do that as well. Uh, one other thing over here in this particular uh, program, if you click on recording, you can set how many bars you want count in. As you can see right here, it says count in and then you can click on how many bars you want. Um, so I've got it set for just one right now, that's fine. So I like to do that, and again, metronome, I have it set while recording, but only during the count in. If I just click this, I'll hear a click all the way through the recording. Sometimes you might want to, um, depends on the application. So, And then I think over here too, you can actually change the tonal quality of, of the metronome, so it'll sound real high-pitched, click 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 or you know real deep like click 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 so a lot of cool options in this but again we're gonna go very basic today just to show you the the ropes of it now I'm gonna leave all these tracks they don't have any special uh, EQ settings or anything like that I'm gonna leave them as blank when I'm done recording then I'm gonna go back over to here and I'll show you how to do the uh, adding compression and EQ and stuff like that so we'll do that in just a few minutes. But let's go ahead and do a recording.